Good morning, everyone. Uh, my apologies for you know few minutes delay due to technical uh, reasons. Uh, uh, we are late by seven minutes, but it is worth waiting uh, to mention in brief about today's speaker. Uh, there is no no forest patch in this part of the. Uh, which is not visited by you know these two speakers and mr bakar and uh, mr sen sir uh, they are uh, qualified engineers and uh, uh, business administration uh, graduates but they spent most of their uh, time in uh, studying about uh, wild wilderness of the area and uh, their uh, contribution towards conservation been tremendous uh, apart from grey wood they do have work you know our also many more species you know about they have uh, you know mid uh, detailed documentaries it's our uh, fortunate that you know we have uh, we have uh, sir with us without uh, wasting much of the time i would request uh, prapakar sir to take over and uh, just you know go ahead with the presentation sir thank you very much sir ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಾನು ಕೃಪಾಕರ್ ಸೆನಾಲಿ ನಾವಿಬ್ರು ರೈಟರ್ಸ್ ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಬೇಕಿರೋದಂದ್ರೆ ದಟ್ಟವಾದ ಅನುಭವ ಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲ ದಟ್ಟವಾದ ಅನುಭವ ಮತ್ತೆ ಒಳನೋಟ ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅಂತ ನಮಗೆ ಸುಮಾರು ಜನ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಏ ನೀವ್ ಯಾಕೆ ನೀವ್ ಹದಿನೈದು ವರ್ಷ ನೀವ್ ಕಾರಣ ಕಾರಣಾಯಿಗಳಿಂದ ಓಡಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಈ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗೆ ನಮಗೆ ಒನ್ ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಚಾಲೆಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಒಂದಂತೂ ನಾನು ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೋಲ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಇದೇ ರೀತಿ ನಾವು ಡೆಕೆನ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ವುಲ್ಫ್ಸ್ ಗಳನ್ನ ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಹೊರಟಕ್ಕೂ ಇದೇ ತರ ನಮಗೆ ಒಂದೇನಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ವುಲ್ಫ್ ಗಳ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಮಗೆ ಬಹಳ ಕುತೂಹಲ ಹುಡ್ಸಿದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಜೋಗ್ರಫಿಕಲ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿಯ ಜನ ಅವರ ಬದುಕು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವರ ವೈವಿಧ್ಯಮಯ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಇದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ ನಮಗೆ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಬೆರಗೊಳಿಸ್ ನಮಗೆ ಈ ವುಲ್ಫ್ ಜರ್ನಿಗೆ ನಮಗೆ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅವರು ಕೊಪ್ಪಳಲ್ಲಿರುವ ನಮ್ಮ ಬಹಳ ಆತ್ಮೀಯ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತರಾದ ಬಾಬಿ ಇಂತ ಒಬ್ಬ ಟ್ರೂ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಶನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಈತ ನಮಗೆ ಉಲ್ಪಿಗೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿದ್ದೇ ಈತ ನಮಗೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರತಿಭಾವಂತ ಒಬ್ಬ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ಜೋಸೆಫ್ ರಾಜ ಓಕೆ ಇವರು ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಟೀಮ್ ತರ ನಾವು ನಾಲ್ಕು ವರ್ಷಗಳ ಕಾಲ ಡೆಕನ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟೋ ಏರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸುತ್ತಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ವಿ ಇದಲ್ಲದೆ ನನಗನ್ಸೋದು ಈಗ ಏನೇ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ನೀವು ಮಾಡೋ ಫಿಲ್ಮ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ನೀವು ಪರ್ಯ ರೈಟ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಯಾವುದೇ ಇದ್ರೊಳಗೆ ಅವು ಒನ್ ರೀತಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಬೀರ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಬೀರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಆ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪೀಸ್ದು ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿನ ನಿರ್ಧಾರ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ನನಗನ್ಸ್ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ವೈಯಕ್ತಿಕವಾದ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ಇದೇನೇ ಇರಲಿ ನಾವು ಏನೇ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರು ಉಲ್ಫ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಬೇರೆ ಏನೇ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರು ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಇದ್ರೊಳಗೆ ಇದು ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಫನ್ ದನ್ ಫನ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಅರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಟ್ರೂ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ but that is not the common perception of the public nor of many scientists i am sorry to say 
if only we took a more expansive view of science and scientists, I think science will indeed be more fun than fun. To do that, scientists need to explore far and wide. We need to take inspiration from the vast stores of knowledge and wisdom from outside the narrow confines of science. This is not my statement. This is actually uh, Dr. Raghavendra Gedakara or on the article in Shurmata. I started with this because we completely agree with what he said. So, we were on the journey to explore our possibilities to make a film and uh, We put in a lot of research before doing any film. And we do it ourselves. Because that experience itself is most enjoyable for us. And that itself will, will bring us more stories. Lead us to the ultimate storyline of the film. So now, journey with me, we were uh, trying to find where wolves are. We were traveling all over North Karnataka, southern part of uh, Maharashtra. But at the end of the day, we traveled more and more in southern part of uh, uh, Maharashtra. Lay, there was a good population of wolf. But in uh, Karnataka side of it, they were so thinly distributed. We never saw a wolf for almost four or five months. But the Arna killed whoever we asked. They would say they're uh, plenty of wolf. But uh, to dig in and find out who has actually seen a wolf was difficult. So end of the day, shepherds or your mothers, all of them, whoever had seen a wolf, had seen only one wolf. That was very interesting. Why do all these people see only one wolf? They're supposed to be in fact. And uh, now work they did a complete human habitat. Is either uh, dry, dry crop uh, land so illa sulfur rocky surfaces or uh, some uncultivatable grassland so athare. So adrolge namge illi hodrunu yi namma country talks hedge illi nodu. So it was very difficult for us to get even the signs of wolves. But uh, for example, forest department on slightly protected area. Only one day, 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 one other in the Murna Lagana would have been. Other in the Fardam Watcher would have been. And Gin Nedita in Gutagla. So Allo the Amela or Lauki Watcher Kataman, the Yen Nedita Kedre, he was worried about his plantation. On Glucidium Nedida Lella. So he was worried that the park points are going to eat up the roots. So I think a local hunter's Kataman, though, other in the FC on Orsaka Kremata. So this was actually very interesting. One aspect of North Karnataka wilderland. So, Alinda now our trackers need can be. You know, a couple more there. What are they? What do they do? Through them, we found a lot of trackers. Invariably, all of them were hunters, small time hunters. Adral one dipro, they had found a lot of wolf dens and dug them out for local shepherds. Local shepherds who contract the river, you can see Engana Madi, Wolf, Il Mariaka, Nodi, Wolki, Wadi. So we thought these are the right people to, you know, groom. Somehow, our Nasalpa, Divet Madi, convinced Madi Namjate, we started tracking wolves. This is the time, then we started getting some idea about where wolves could be. I'll kill a wolf. But we never saw wolf for a long time. And then ultimately we settled on in one place. 
ಆ ಸೆಟ್ಲ್ ಆಗ ಮುಂಚೆ ವಿ ವರ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಹೋಗಿ ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ವಿ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎಡ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಒನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಅದರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಈ ಹೊಲಾಲೋ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಯೂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋ ಫರ್ ದರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಮೀನ್ ಮೈಲ್ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಉಲ್ಫ್ ಟಾಟಮ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಬುಕ್ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಆ ಉಲ್ಫ್ ಟಾಟಮ್ ಬುಕ್ ನನ್ನ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಒಬ್ಬ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನೀನು ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಇದ್ರು ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ರು ಉಲ್ಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಪಾರ್ಲಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಓದ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದೆ ಐ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಚೈನೀಸ್ ನಾವೆಲ್ ಅದು ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವೈಡ್ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ನಾವೆಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಇನ್ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಸೋ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈನ್ಯೂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಆ ಗುಡ್ಡದ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಆಗುದು ಒಂದು ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇಬಿ ಎ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಕೆಪಬಿಲಿಟಿ ನಿಮಗಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಸೊ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೈಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಮಿತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ದೋ ದೀಸ್ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಇನ್ ಎ ವೇ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ಯಾಂಗಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಮಂಗೋಲಿಯಾ ಚೈನೀಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಮಂಗೋಲಿಯಾ so he had become a part of the myth so somewhere my objective mind did not permit me to accept all this so i got out of the book forgot about the book on 30 40 pages was there then i forgot about the whole thing but in the middle why do myths form because e wolf idella all over the world wolf is always surrounded by myths so it is difficult to see wolf without the cover of myth but i ange myth andre but why did they tell them why did they tell them why did they why did uh, our ancestors or who had legends and uh, stories and myths and what function did the tales serve and how is that different from the tales we tell today how do tales become associated with truth or falsehood all is fair game for a grand view of science and the again uh, dr gadakar yelta on kade man ga the is a very 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 interesting argument for me but by then i had got bored with the book i left the book there he naturally she put the wolf to gondre 13 degree north of in the northern hemisphere me 13 degree north ge all over the world the wolves are there from almost here to uh, uh, the north pole but illo one kade in the human evolution possibly many successful human civilizations selected the grasslands where the mammal population was good and they moved with the mammal population they migrated when the mammal, mammal population expanded so with that this being a grassland hunter this wolf possibly homo sapien had a long connection very long connection thousands thousands of years the relation was possibly hate fear opportunity appreciation also sometimes because the wolves are uh, pack hunters human being also possibly in his uh, primitive state was a pack hunter and both were living on the same niche so somewhere they had a very complicated relation with each other i'm sure you all know and all our dog breeds have come from wolves so it could be because of this relation but at the same time wolf must have played a lot of big role on the minds of people so that is where that is why 
the myth surrounding wolf is around the wolf is more than any any other any other other animal all over the world wolves are always surrounded by myth so in a way we were also exploring the myths surrounding the wolf in our area also but now we really travel marte daga we were coming across a very rich colorful culture and nomadic people in uh, north karnataka and southern uh, maharashtra once we came across a series of bullock huts yella huge very big big bulls are with uh, covered arch uh, gadigal ittavalla so bartane idru namge curiosity kadiyakagi so we went and talked to them nive en madadu illinda bartta idre illige hogte then we found out they are also nomadic people they were just going from village to village writing down the details about so many families they had big ledgers very neatly written over hundreds of years it was a very surprising uh, thing for us because we had never known about that culture in our own land see in the next to hodre allello one kade ee hanmantan chitra raman chitra kendo kudre gadi gal nittide colorful andre colorful ivru en maartta idare anta kelidre avondo ramayana da kathe helkondu urindu urdu hodade avondo jeevana that is how they live idu alla mathe ivathil camp maadi alla ivat show ide nimda e illri navu ivat hobekittu ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಂಗಸ್ರಿಗೆ ಹೆರಿಗೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದ್ ದಿವಸ ನಿಂತು ನಾಳೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಫರ್ ಅಸ್ ಫರ್ ಅಸ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಂಡೇ ಟು ಸಂಡೇ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಈವನ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಲೆಸ್ ರೇನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಸಿ ದ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಓವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಸರಿಯಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಫರ್ ಅಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಈ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಯೋಚನೆ ಬಂತು ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾಡರ್ನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ಎರಾ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಲೂಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಕರ್ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ವೆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರಲ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಡ್ರಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಡ್ರಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ so we are driving ourselves towards so many things but idella nan yak helide andre why i had to tell you all this is you have to get a picture of the landscape where the wolves are still living so that means this human habitat filled with all these migrants including us was the ecology of wolves so you cannot see wolf separately from the myth and the extreme cultures which were at the verge of vanishing okay now travel matter we started uh, camping in different uh, fields so we had a big team we had all the camping equipment and we were sleeping in the open but we had so many other things to cook and after 5 6 7 days one day suddenly ratri 8 gantege jor galate aagittu yen galate aagtade anta nodre ond erdu tractor maadkondu jana namna odeyak bandidru with all the weapons and all sorts of full amel they were all drunk and there was no logic in what they were talking and we could not understand much because that part of canada was different to us and uh, especially when they are angry it was almost impossible for us to understand then uh, ultimately it cooled down and they all went off and they, we, we were supposed to pack up and leave that same night from that place amel gudaitu they all thought that uh, we were there looking for some hidden uh, treasure ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ನಿಧಿ ಕದಿಯ ನಿಧಿಗೆ ಅಂತ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳೆಲ್ಲ ಕರ
So they were wondering whether we are there to steal one of their children. Hange mundukta ukta nam hinde mittu namna follow matte itu without we knowing. Ali next to now kidney ke dek bandhi jive enta itu amela nam jo nam student ano udha kudu put kondo topya kend gagal sa kondo ando wale la kondo tida so on rape madak madhi dene enta itu. And Joe complained one day, at least she could get her head for a girl, sir. Yeah, what is this nonsense? Even very old people are also saying that I'm come, I come there to rape them. So, Indian Edita. But by then, we were slowly becoming part of the myth. Then I realized why this group taught him the book. The author writes as though he's part of the myth. Somehow, chasing. The wolf, we were also getting entangled with the wolf, with the myth surrounding the wolf. So, he matte wo dakshar mar dia wolf tadam kade. That was not, in a way, if you had the capacity to separate between some of the fictitious stories, he was definitely. But they would never. Use any unethical method to kill them, and they would never poison them. They would never smoke them out when they're dining, and they would not go to certain places out of fear, fear of wolf. They would know their strength, and the wolf knew its strength. So they were ecologically somewhere separated in the same grassland. So this book was getting very interesting to me. So I was running through the book parallel to this. So sometime our livestock attack murder, this uh, tribe would go back and take revenge on them, and they would also observe them hunting. Our myth, it looks like a mythical story to me, and it looked like that at that stage to me, like one of the hunting sequence detail of Baritana, no? Otherly. This is a book. This is, this is a novel. I'm not. Uh, please realize that this is a novel. This is a fiction. But it also has some element of truth. So I was reading, enjoying it. Alone, kare paritana ya do. Ul sella bandu kai ko kai kondo. Al gazels to one bigger bigger herd aada ja kai kondo just before winter. When the, just the surface of the i do. The are timely, so they will surround surround the gazelle in such a way that they'll keep following the gazelle herd. In gazelle herds, in almost lakhs in town, but yet so Adna surround Matondo Ogi one the jag dali they will attack. Attack Matre one fellow will run through the middle of it, split the whole herd. Ado attack Matak Matre very funny thing, and then they will wait through the night for the early morning. When their bladder is full and they cannot run fast and the body is not, so our sudden na get to see, Madhya Pradesh when the attack made, in one kind of that, in one the fraction of the pack will try to guide them to a pass. The other fraction will stop them in another direction. So they split it up into three and guide them into a pass. Over the pass, as soon as they go over the pass, they will all attack in one go and in such speed, these gazelles will not be able to control themselves and jump into the frozen. Pond at the way. There they will all get frozen, and the whole winter there will be meat for wolves and all the other smaller carnivores and for the people. And the Parikan. I don't know how true it is, but uh, I I don't know how much true it is. But Namjoo wild dog mat bithare vodan sathi anbo akte. When there are more uh, adult animals in a pack, and they are there together for a longer time. And there will be different culture for different pack. Different packs would use different strategies uh, during uh, hunting. So one other thing I'll tell you: one 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 particular animal would, uh, if they have to come with the wind, with the wind towards uh, say a chital herd, then that pack had a culture. Only that pack had a culture. No other pack knew how to handle such situation. If they had to come with the had to come with the this thing with the wind, and if They will know where the 
fire at Chetal resting places. So when they have, when they come very near to it, they would come right in the middle of that. By then, all the Chetal would have uh, vanished from the scene and uh, they would have walked away from where the wild dogs are coming. Only that pack would go forward for another one kilometer and then uh, just rest there for 20, 20 or 25 minutes and come back and take the Cheetal by sur surprise because Cheetal would have assumed that these wild dogs have passed and now the wind is not favorable and the wild dogs have passed, they will not come back for another two, three hours. Even if they have to go back on the same road, they will come only up another two hours. It will be what the Cheetal would be thinking. But uh, the wild dogs would come back, go through the bushes, pick out an animal unaware and bring them out to the waiting pack. This was a strategy, very, very, uh, very adaptive culture, which we could see observe in only one pack. And in another pack, uh, when the alpha male and the alpha, second male were hunting, when uh, especially the second male takes off, the alpha female uh, and another subadult would uh, run in an entirely different direction and reach a pond before the chetal is chased down to that area. Uh, we exactly don't know how the other pack members were coordinating, but it was happening again and again. So it was more thought of processes. The culture, it, it was a uh, well oiled, well, well, well coordinated uh, strategy. This thing. So it was completely, I don't want to rule out what he was uh, talking about, the gazelles and uh, wolf hunt. But they also had another very interesting aspect. They would kill wolf. You should remember, they would kill wolf. They would hate wolves. They would uh, do anything to protect their uh, herd. But at the same time, their uh, the domestic uh, sheep herd, the limit limiting factor was also wolf. And they had fear of going to certain areas. So again, that area is completely original ecosystem would thrive without the interference of these shepherds. So a lot of this ecological interaction was there, definitely there and uh, it was doing, and that is a fragile grassland right next to the Gobi Desert in cold desert. But they also had another belief in the Wolf Totem book. Okay, the, you have to be able to differentiate between the fiction and the facts I'm talking about. Don't mix it up and at the end of the day, if you ask me difficult questions, I'll ask you to go through it again. Okay, so our Ali, they had another belief. They always thought that wolf is a messenger of the tenegar. Tenegar and the out of grassland uh, spirit. And that. Uh, they believed that the wolves are the protectors of this grassland. They believed that the wolves are the messengers of tenegar, the spirit of the grassland. And that. They would hate, fight. They would do anything, but not unethical aspect. But end of the day, when one of their family member died, they will just put the body on a bullock on a cart uh, driven by Yaktara or the animal. They would ride long distance. There will be certain places where the, they think the wolves are there and the land is very rough. They would run the cart much faster so that the body will just fall off and they will not turn, they will just come back. That is for the wolves to feed on. They believe that the wolves will take them to the tenegal. Andre, the myths are quite fascinating for me, like, you know. So that's why I try to explain why that myth might have creeped into our life. Evolutionary psychology, you can say. They were contrasting the other anymore. This is about Inner Mongolia in China, is what I was talking about. Contrastingly, in Europe, okay, I remember one thing. Recently, about say 10 years back, 11, no, 2011 maybe, when we were in Germany, oh, Germany entry. Germany and try there, Ali Tanka red alert Madi, Ali Shepherds and red alert Madi, sharp shooters were being arranged to shoot them. Why do they? 
again it could be something to do with their cultural psychology the fear of the animal so idu wolf allinda idu wolf in sulp hinde hodre by around 15th century europe alli pastoral idu pastoral culture jaasti adige wolf they found wolf is one of the major enemy so they started eliminating uh, by then they had better weapons and things else. so they started poisoning started killing them in all over the world adrallu england alle england alli they eradicated wolf to such an extent the last uh, pack of wolf they came to know that they are in the scotland uh, woods they in fact burnt down part of the forest to finish off those would say by around 1600 or so not even just before that the large wolf on uh, england soil was gone uk soil was gone then by 1600 uh, european started migrating to us alli ban nodre alli red indians bisons bisons in millions and very good number of wolves so these europeans had come with all their prejudices laws and the past with the wolf and so of the wolf so so their enmity and that uh, urge to finish them off in even us land continue but the wolf for their time can i tell uh this uh, red indians they thought to more of a moderation in fact red indians were dependent on wolves and bisons in one or the other way. again the relation was one way brotherhood the other way hate the other way fear they were all all the three of them were that they, they had a very complex relation among themselves but none of them were out to eradicate any other one so bisons were in millions so Red Indians had had lot of dependency on uh, bisons for food, their cloth, their everything. So Europeans thought to control Red Indians, if we finish off bisons, Red Indians will come under control. They shot bisons in millions. By then the winter came, a severe winter came. and they had forgotten about wolf for a short period because their numbers had gone down dramatically but this winter gave them a fantastic opportunity to bounce back that was their dunning time and they bounced back with resilience this is always in the history of wolf they have come back they have bounced back again and again and again sometimes especially in the poison they failed to fail to come back or fail to survive but this uh, by then uh, then the european from there to the here to there they came back to wolf and uh, started eradicating them started using all sorts of method but it still took another 350 years for them to almost eradicate the wolf from the main uh, this thing and uh, today's uh, Yellowstone National Park. It's around now only like must be around hundred thousand square kilometers or so. So that Yellowstone National Park was on one of the last uh, strong uh, base for the wolves. So the last wolf was eradicated from Yellowstone National Park in nineteen thirty-five. For the next fifty years, there are no wolves. and some study was going on and some few things and uh, some of the scientists found out that there is something seriously going wrong in the ecosystem dramatic changes are happening and uh, not for the good so by then by then uh, by so around 80 in the 80s 1980s a huge scientific study was set up in Yellowstone National Park they started studying all aspects of it it must be an amazing experience for them all because all sorts of scientists from insect to 
from birds to genetics to uh, trees to mammals to you know you name it about the overall uh, ecology ecosystem so all sorts of scientists about hundreds of the hundred of them started studying uh, the overall changes in the ecosystem in uh, Yellowstone National Park. By 1995, they had come to a very strong conclusion that these changes, a lot of changes have happened. What are the changes which is happening? See, these water bodies had become bigger and shallow. And the trees by the river were grazed, I mean, browsed to the almost to a very small level and uh, shades were had completely gone. So the, the river had become shallow, warm and not good for the aquatic life. So most of the aquatic life was gone. And the beaver population had crashed. I think you know all this, but this is important for me to repeat because this is one real classic story. Beaver population had crashed. Raptors had gone down. The elk population was not much affected. They were neither too much up or too much down. Coyote population had gone up. Badger population had crashed. Some of the smaller bird population had crashed. Some of the frogs, frogs had almost gone extinct. So why was it happening? And then with all the study and with all the precautions, because it was such an extensive study, it once in a once in a century type of uh, amazing effort it was. So they decided to read the rules in Yellowstone National Park in 1995. Within a very short period, when you are talking of geological times, this is nothing. You will never get such a classic example in such a short period. In a very short period, D, all the other populations had bounced back, the rivers had become deeper, and the beaver population bounced back. They, they built their own check dams, and the aquatic uh, population was coming back. Aquatic uh, ecosystem was rejuvenating continuously, and the elk population was almost stable. It was not really affected. How this has happened? So that is what the, the scientists call it, landscape of fear. Landscape of fear and there, wolves did not take enough. There were many other predators such as grizzly, puma, coyote and all those. But this is just another predator. But they created a landscape of fear. That means the elk did not stop in one place, especially during winter to browse down all the trees. That made, that made a huge difference. This is a classic example of tropic cascading and Tala. Tropic cascading this is a classic example. A miso predator release or enemy releasing effect. All this, all this, this is a classic field example. This is a very, very rare thing to uh, really find in uh, the field. Or, uh, so, Nano, Jotele Utratum Otta, I mean, Hange Mundukotala. So, one night, sometime when I was very happy with something at uh, the book or something like that, I would tell the story to all my trackers, all in and friends, into and students. I would tell some part of the wolf totem story before sleeping that day. We were, we were that night, and we were sleeping in the open. And Namashna on the foldable cart in Kondukaji. We would sleep in the open in the field. That day it was a uh, full moon, and moonlight was very beautiful when I when we slept. And North Karnataka, the strange thing is, morning it will be 40 degrees, and the same night in winter, same thing night it can be it can come down to around five six degrees, four five degrees. It was really cold, and and that day some information had come only after the one yellow and wolf might be denning and that. So how to find out? You can never see them because, uh, because of so many shepherds and so many people movement, they will have their own strategy to hide from all these people's uh, 
view. So, Adike Rantri building the war around 3 30. The I was supposed to be taken and dropped in the middle of a rocky bunch, one small rocky hill. Like it was so, a very tough, arid land, thorny bushes and rocky. Only I was supposed to be dropped. So, around 3 o'clock in the morning, they woke me up and took me there. Uh, Chadi, the Chelly Athabono, he made a Rathrathi Hidaki. So I sat in the middle of it and they all went back home, went back to the camp and slept on. So I was there, there ready almost by 4 30 in the morning. I was ready, nothing can be seen, even though there's moonlight. A moonlight, small movements of rodents and all those things are very interesting actually. Uh, they will also be moving from shadow to shadow and uh, there will be shadows, but there will be no clarity. But you can see everything, but you cannot see anything. That is that that that's the way it was. So I was sitting there by around. Uh, I still remember it was around January seventeenth or something like that. So early morning, the moon was setting right in front of me. Just then, I heard a howling call. Ooh, the one the uh, wolf howling kirst. I was so thrilled, fascinated that I thought it was going to come and I am going to find out where the den is. Nothing came. But then, some bright, it was becoming bright suddenly, so I looked back. And two great giants who completely control uh, the earth were there for me. You know, one and the full moon was setting, the other end, the, the sun was rising. It was an amazingly extraordinary experience. So then uh, they picked me up, uh, all the trackers picked me up at around 8.30 in the morning. I had found nothing, I just heard one howling call. And so we went back home, we went back to the camp. Then everybody was looking at my face silently. Then uh, they asked me to just go near where my bed was. I went there and immediately saw a wolf had gone, walked past my bed just 10 feet from me in the night. And we were looking for that bloody wolf all over, wherever we can go. And, you know, we were doing all out effort. And that animal had come right next to me. So that type of surreal experience, and nobody had come to know what it was. That, that type of surreal experience was continuously happening. Like one day, we had, a, we had our own... Uh, bathroom there. Like it was just three rocks and where uh, after uh, the night, uh, if you take one bucket, one soap and one towel, you could place it in different on different rocks and you could stand in the middle rock and have a nice bath in the open. Like one of those nights actually, Rupa had felt that some somebody peeped in from the bushes and went back. And then next day, and that too, you know, we were camping right next to a tamarind tree. All these trackers were sometimes paranoid with all the devils, uh, the spirits and all. And Krupa told this also. Somebody looked through the bushes and went down. And next day morning, we tracked it down right, to the wolf, which had come there just out of curiosity. Because we were looking like on camping site. So it was just it had just come to check whether we have any domestic animals to steal or something like that. We had no clue. but. It was all becoming very surreal and we were getting completely entangled in the myth. But at the same time, we were also thinking from our uh, naturalistic point of view. So we were exploring so many aspects of food. By then we had started, we, have, we have, in a, roughly we were able to track down few animals and we, we roughly knew how they survive in the morning. Like most of these animals, go to dark shades, maybe right next to a small bush or something like that and dig in and just lay there with just their ears up. Until your, your eyes are completely trained to those fields, you can never see them. First of all, you can't see that what is that, what is there in the dark shadow because the whole other part of it is so bright, you cannot see. So we had, by then we started seeing wolves and started following some of them and started identifying some of them. So that had started giving us more information, but more questions were being followed because there were hardly any prey species in that area. We had uh, maybe we had seen one black nabbed here in the last six months in that area where we were. We had settled down in one area, 
where uh, the old population seemed good. So, but what is the prey? There were no prey animals at all. Of course, they were rodents. And scavenging opportunity were very limited because there was one village about two kilometers away and there uh, they would hardly leave anything for the animals. But, uh, <laughs> but there were all sorts of predators. Like there were wolves, hyenas, uh, jackals, sparks, uh, civets and uh, jungle cat. And How about the surviving? What were they eating on? We were wondering. So one of the a prey density bug I had okay, I'll give you just one example. On this hour, we were uh, walking past a village and suddenly a uh, village half the village was running behind something. And uh, 15, 20 dogs were following them. We were wondering what is happening. One boy was standing there because he could not turn up. He had some injury in his leg or something that he could not run up with them. He was standing there. So that is the prey density we were, uh, we were talking about. So what were they feeding on? phone the when we went there, that owner said that they eat bananas. Okay, we understand that this uh, canids can digest uh, vegetable matter. But it cannot be the main diet. Nah? Then we went and saw there were a lot of actually half eaten bananas, uh, unripe half eaten bananas uh, on the ground, and a lot of footprints. Uh, we don't know whether it is a dog and a wolf again. So we set up uh, camera cameras and then trap cameras and then realized, okay, wolves come and eat bananas. So that is one thing, but bananas cannot be, you know, uh, fill their stomach all the time. They are big predators, they are not small ones. Eh? So, Ashtatke supported the entire Namthot to live the Iman Kedan of Kona. So, Hinge Neditai to Yoga, the prey base in Kona. Amele, okay, if they are stealing domestic animals, we also had the data. And for the number of uh, wolves they were supposed to be, and number of uh, animals picked up is negligible, like, and it was not really from the local shepherds. This wolf both it was never sufficient for their uh, as a diet for them all through the year. So where were they getting their food? And again, we were getting confused. Meanwhile, dining time. So. Denning time, by then we had a clue about where they might be denning. Adu, one village in the was hardly half on six, seven hundred meters lay. One extremely rugged, arid terrain is there. One small, very small, maybe uh, five hectares, maximum five, yeah, maximum five hectares. It is a five hectares jag the lay. One the rocky hillock was there, very small. The other side of it is a devstana, temple, a small temple, local temple, not like our land. One small temple, in one small cave like thing, there's one uh, rock and they put some vibhuti uh, on it. The other side is this uh, arid landscape. It's extremely hard, uh, rocky terrain with thorny bushes. It is there because it is absolutely uncultivatable. All, our, all around it is cultivated land. So ultimately we found the den in that hillock. Before that we were also we were also uh, uh, inquiring with all people, everybody, all around the Ella villages cook. Have you seen wolf around this area? They would say, a oh, long, long back, maybe at least 10 years back, we have seen one wolf here or something that they are not coming this way at all. Is there any domestic picking? Like, you know, kill again. One kill again, especially in the last uh, one month, absolutely, Sukhmutla, one kilometer radius village, one kill again. I think 
we realize that it is a strategy that this this experience rules which we were following was uh, adopting it was denning for the last one month nobody knew that there it was there and all around it fields people are working and in the day time uh, sometimes the goats will come in right in front of the den and they are there for the last one month we are trying to follow them in hide and seek so that nobody will notice us or not we will not attract too much of attention but it was denning there so at last we found many incidents like this and we found out okay now see e this landscape was quickly changing these wolves have adopted to this changing landscape and changing culture like just maybe 50 years back or 100 years back the population was very thin and cultivatable land was very less because the water source was a, was a greater limitation and then we got better and better water uh, sources and then now with the bore well and the irrigation system it has dramatically changed the landscape so wolf have somehow evolved and living in this landscape for may not be evolved but living in this landscape for hundreds of years and they have adopted to all the changes that the human being has brought in but now with this irrigation and borewell it is changing so fast it might be finding it very difficult to adopt and survive so if we want to do conservation of wolf there is no way you can give protection status to this habitat because it is completely human dominant landscape so what can be done the only thing we our study we thought which is possible is just protecting those rugged arid plots without being quarried or without being converted into agriculture again no plantation no fencing and no extra protection just that somewhere if it can be protected that is one way that is maybe one of the thing which might work for the conservation of the wolf because wolf you cannot give them a sanctuary in those landscape because it is all completely human habitat again our zoo mysore zoo has good population of uh, wolf so maybe their plan is to reintroduce them sometime in the future but how do you teach them stealing if you can teach them anything but how do you teach them stealing and hiding from all this hostile people environment which looks that is why this american experiment Yellowstone National Park experiment cannot be taken into our land directly. There is a huge difference between the ecology of wolf there and the landscape which they are living here. So it's a very very big uh, difference. Basically, our uh, Deccan plant of uh, wolves live in grasslands and scrub jungle. these are again mostly village uh, grazing pastures uh, rain fed uh, agriculture fields all these things these are also uh, grazing grounds for uh, local uh, pastorals and uh, nomadic tribes these nomadic uh, shepherds are a very strange community we were coming across these nomadic shepherds quite often but they were very reluctant to talk to us about anything we had asked them many a times about wolves and things like that as soon as you ask about wolf they wouldn't want to talk to you they would keep moving they would be in a rush so it took a lot of time to just and it is also not the same people the other different people will be coming and going coming and going coming and going. so somewhere after 2 2 years or so we start we 
we somehow found ways to converse this, with this uh, nomadic tribe. And then we realized that there is a huge uh, mortality as they go along in their uh, you know, domestic uh, sheep and as they go along this track. So all along this, uh, as soon as they enter their home range, these wolves will feed on them for uh, say around 15 days, 20 days like that. And these people, you know what happened? Once uh, we came across, we were searching for the wolf and we saw some shepherds coming from the other direction with their sheep and dogs and things like that. They were in a hurry. We stopped them to inquire whether they saw any wolf. As soon as we said wolf, one fellow started confessing. We did not do anything. We did not do anything. I actually saved it. My dog uh, tried to bite it, but it was not our fault. We are extremely sorry. And things like that. We were completely surprised what is happening. And then we realized that there was uh, one of the dog, one nigh, alone wolf pup, na, just so 500 meters in there, one wolf, chicken, uh, small pup in the sense, uh, may around uh, five months old. A five months old pup, na, it had almost killed a pup. And these people rescued it. And they were just walking up. Walking up so fast, they were not even looking back whether all their sheep were following them or not. Can you believe this scenario? Then he told us, at least, you know, the mother will come, catch one of the sheep and feed it to that pup and that pup will survive. The blame will not come on us. They have such a strong belief. This is suddenly we realized, okay, this is one real food source for the wolves here and one real something beyond our ability to grasp is protecting wolves. Whereas all over, wherever, all these local, including local uh, pastorals, uh, lo local shepherds, would be hating wolves. They would be asking us, hey, wolf, it won't have mandir entry, it can't do it, it can't do it, it can't do it. So they were agitated, they, they never liked wolf. But this shepherd, we did not understand the whole thing at all. So you know the bits they were running away from that area, scared, completely scared. Ali Kurinu Karganoktila or full fast of the Kurigan Nidanak Bata, Bandre Burli Ali, Yadara would hold up Bandu, he'd do a Marik feed Madi and the bulk school or the bulk school in the they have such a strong belief. Amen Amelami Vodaitoto. So we started inquiring more and more about that belief. And that belief is something like uh, one brother uh, one brother so that our brother you will be shapaki so that that young Younger brother who left the family, you believe in the Aune Ogi Tola Agitan. Tola Anta, Tola Drupal Bando, own share on the own of them. If by any chance, you unknowingly or knowingly, Tola Nenar, you Nigel, other end betrayal, Urena or that will destroy their family in our belief. So, this is something, this is this belief. Actually, with all this, especially agriculture and to some part mining and uh, industries, are almost finishing off uh, uh, the nomadic culture. Those nomads, nomadic shepherds, are on the verge of extinction. So, this vanishing culture and another animal which is at the verge of local extinction, they were clinging on to a very thin thread of belief. I'm not defending the myth or the beliefs or anything. But when you go exploring deep and deep, 
it can definitely give you a better and a different perspective on what actually you're looking for. Half of a problem on how these wolves are surviving. And such meager prey density actually gave rise to all these things. But uh, But uh, meanwhile, uh, we are also wondering how do these wolves steal the sheep? Is they stealing from uh, you know how shepherds can build the thing? How my can build the thing? How do they steal the sheep? So if it is that uh, hide and seek and that secret secretive uh, operation, then it was impossible for us to see also. But one day what happened, we were in the camp, middle of the day, 12 o'clock, and it was really hot and uh, many of us are almost in uh, diarrhea because of the heat. And we were thinking of leaving, uh, packing up for a few days. At around 12 o'clock in the mid midday, hot sun, we always thought this is a wolf's hunt in the late evening and night uh, sometime. Uh, but then, uh, some other uh, senior IAS officer was also with us. He had just come to visit and say hello to him. We wanted to see Wolf. So, suddenly on Titiba, I mean, laughing on the call. So, everybody looked in that direction and started talking again because we all thought in the middle of the day, 12 o'clock, it must be shepherds and their dogs coming. So, because of the dogs, this, but it kept on giving for a longer time and it gave, gave in two different directions. That made me some sus slightly suspicious because we had followed wild dogs for so many years, we could pick up every clue and we could almost differentiate the sounds. Not here, but uh, we had developed that in, in our instincts had really evolved. So I just went to check. And the shepherds were coming. And that shepherd was known to us. He's a local shepherd, that fellow was known to us. So I was talking to him about invariably I was asking about whether he saw a wolf in the last two, three days, or where where all he had been. And they'll be grazing in different areas. So they are the main source of information for us. So I wanted to know. I was talking to him. He was. We were at least three feet from one another, and he was facing me. I was facing him, and uh, behind him, his uh, sheep were grazing. All around, dogs were there. His dogs were there, and uh, they will also have some goats. Those goats will be invariably in the uh, outer periphery of the this thing, and they'll be browsing somewhere. Yeah, sometime even further, far away from maybe. Uh, 50 feet from the herd, 60 feet from the herd. So, uh, when I was talking, I was just looking at one of the uh, goat browsing. I was wondering, oh, this is how the wolf might take, because they'll get straight, they'll run away and things like that. Suddenly, when I was looking, just behind it, hardly 25, 30 feet from there, behind a bush, I saw an animal. That I thought, is one of their dog. But the look of it and the eyes I, I, which I saw in that fraction of a second was familiar to me. That was a subadult which was which we were often seeing, like we were seeing it again and again near the camp. So that was the wolf. So that was just a fraction of a second uh, visual. And I turned back to the shepherd. And that fellow is completely believing me and talking to me. I don't know whether I should tell him that there's a wolf or uh, just see this opportunity which we were waiting for ages. And I was looking at that and looking at him, looking at that, looking at him. And he kept on talking about wolf, where he saw, where he didn't see, and things and all sorts of things. Suddenly, my eyes started looking for any other signs anywhere else. I just looked to the right, just uh, say around 11 o'clock from me, I saw something moving from the bush and next fraction of a second, one sheep was gone. That was our alpha male. 
That is a big gulf. And this subordinate is happily showing his face to everybody. And they had come exactly against the wind. Both of them had come exactly against the wind and they had given no clue to all the shepherd ducks. That was an amazing experience. But then uh, all the sheep ran away from that place. This uh, shepherd also ran straight to that place, grabbed it, and that uh, alpha male left the carcass and ran away. But at least I knew how they. Maybe it was a diversion, maybe it was not, but the way they approached it was magical, magical and surreal. So at that time, basically, and we also saw another thing. You, Kuri, Orkonakkala, Atemle, our Mari, all of them pen married. Even this local shepherd, they would do it. They camp everywhere and. They just pen it and uh, keep them inside and take the adults for grazing. Many times uh, at their camp only ladies will be there, children will be there, one dog will be there, something. Somebody told me, somebody had told me, a nomadic shepherd had told us, so beautiful mythical stories were coming around the world. We were always ready and keen to listen to all those stories. Because as I told you, you cannot separate the wolf from their myth and uh, so you are listening and one of them had told us that uh, the, the wolf which is here around your camp in that area is uh, extremely intelligent. That is the most intelligent animal I have seen in the whole of um, our journey up and down. Because he is the one he knows how to penetrate the uh, pen. He says in the night when uh, the bigger pen is all set. Without their dogs knowing, it will very clearly take out all the plugs they use to uh, tighten the thing. And so that the sheep will run away out of, out of it and then it will grab one. We never believed in all those things. Okay. But anyway, we were taking all this. And suddenly, uh, we all thought that, okay, we'll do an experiment. We'll just start sitting in one pen continuously for, say, around one month. Let's see. All the other people will be doing their job. But one of them, one of us will be sitting with the camera near the pen. And actually it happened one day and that subadult and the alpha male came and that subadult came all around me and uh, started, started pulling the thread which was uh, binded for the pen. Slowly started taking out all of them. But that adult male, somehow the wind turned or something like that, it suspected my presence. I just didn't complete the thing and went up. And this subordinate went ahead and tried to open it up. This is an extremely intelligent uh, method with that. Another one is, uh, I told you, when they were denning, one month, one in one kilometer radius, no villages, these wolves were seen by no villages, and these wolves, they took no domestic animal in the one kilometer radius. Absolutely. One month. This is a hundred percent sure data. One month they did not take a single uh, domestic animal. <laughs> one fine day we were coming there early in the morning, six o'clock or something like that. One old lady was crying in a village, which was hardly 700, 600 meters from the den. And she was uh, scolding everybody, including us. So we stopped and asked what it is. Then she said that a big wolf came and took away one uh, goat kid from right in front of my eyes in my house itself. We were quite surprised and uh, how can this wolf didn't do anything for one month and suddenly I plucked uh, on a young animal right from the village, which is uh, right next to that. Uh, Den. Then we went there, Den was empty. They had shifted. He had shifted yesterday evening and picked up on uh, this thing from uh, the village. It was very, very calculatively done, I suppose. So all this, this is, I know, this is all adaptation. This is extreme adaptation and culture specific to certain facts and certain areas. And, but still, the intelligence with which they have carried out all this, 
make us confused about the myths surrounding them. So, but only Ultratam Malayan Matane, a Ultratam novel story, the lad. I'll just tell you about how he concludes that novel. So, only Chinese cultural psych, cultural, cultural revolution, right? So, their motive, one of the biggest motive is to increase production. Obbanu hasdir bath. Nobody should go hungry. Will increase the production in every which way, in every which, uh, every aspect. So meat production no jaste mara naanta decided. So inner Mongolia le, the shepherds did jago no. Lot of revolutionaries. Everybody came. So order was to increase the meat production. Let us, this is a big, beautiful grassland. Why are you wasting so much of grassland? It's so minimal, minimal sheep. So they increase the production dramatically. Nobody listened to the nomads and their pleas and their, their And they realized wolf is one of the major factors which is limiting. So they eradicated with, without mercy without ethics, without any, the military moved in to finish them up. They burned, they poisoned, they killed in thousands. So in next 10 years, the production, meat production went up dramatically. Again, this is not my saying. This is how that fictional novel concludes. The meat production went up dramatically in the next 10 years. Everybody were happy. And slowly this fragile grassland caved in. And the Gobi Desert started swallowing it. And today, the Beijing is getting yellow, stone, yellow sand storms. It has now gone up to Korea. Is how it concludes. So for us, It is, it, is, it is important to understand the bigger perspective rather than just looking at certain aspects. So this gives a bigger insight into, it can actually give you an insight into if you are to, trying to do introduction, reintroduction, if you are trying to do conservation of species, it is important to know all the aspects surrounding that itself can be called an ecosystem. So thank you. Thank you. Can I conclude? Okay. Uh, the novel, okay. novel I talked about is uh, Wolf Totem, Wolf Totem, Wolf T O T E M. What are the prey of uh, wolves and uh, who, what is their habitat? Are they, I, I think I told you it's a human landscape, uh, mostly agriculture fields, dry, 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 uh, uh, rain-fed agriculture fields are their main. Uh, landscape, but they are now also trying to adopt themselves to agri uh, wet, uh, wet lands, wet agriculture lands. And uh, what steps to be taken if you are attacked by a pack of wolves? I don't think any any animal will unnecessarily attack you. And if they, if they see, it is a very interesting thing, I'll tell you. What, are the, what steps to be taken if you are attacked by a pack of wolves? Okay. All these wild animals never attack you. Take my assurance. 100% of the time, they, they don't want to attack you. Unless if they're in trouble, if they're with young, young ones, if they're stressed, if they're uh, disoriented, if they're pushed to their limits. If you're within your limit, none of the animals attack. But suppose they want to attack. 
All mm. these people who go to the forest will tell you, uh, if the elephants come, you run in like, like this, uh, the all. When tiger attack, when uh, uh, you have to look around and then come from the back, all uh, this. But I'll tell you, I'll assure you another thing. If these predators want to kill you, you have no way you can escape. So they don't want to kill you. They don't consider you as food. That is it. If they want to kill you, they, you can never, if they want to kill you, and if it is a healthy tiger, say if it is a healthy tiger in the forest, uh, and if it wants to kill you, uh, there is no way you can escape. Because if you escape, that will be the most uh, useless animal in the world. And it cannot survive in the world. As simple as that. Okay. Next. What happened to wolves in Melkote? It was a uh, wolf sanctuary once upon a time. It was. It is still a wolf sanctuary. But what happened? Wolves are there, and uh, shepherds were also coming in. And then uh, the population went down a bit. Then uh, the forest department thought it should be protected. It protected it. But uh, with the protection measures, I think. Uh, the landscape again changed, which was not very favorable to wolves. So, wolves left that place. So, this is a very tricky thing in conserving wolves. It was an honest effort by the forest department. I don't blame them. Now, after four years in the field behind wolves, we understand a little bit of them. And that is why I was just sticking to. If we are conserving, we are not declaring it as sanctuary. If we are de declaring, they have huge home ranges. It varies from landscape to landscape. It can be just 100 square kilometers in one place and uh, 1,000 square kilometers in another place. So it varies drastically. And if we are trying to protect the whole area where they live, it is impossible there will be a revolution, people will kill you. And we are uh, 130, 140 crore people. We have hardly any space left for the animals. Especially these fellows adopted and survived in this district. But what we feel is they are reaching a dead end with so many strong uh, fast changes and uh, mad development drive. They are definitely reaching a dead end. But these meta population also become important when it comes to genetic diversity and uh, the conservation of a bigger population. And these wolves, we talk about isolated population, but they might not be completely isolated population because they can, uh, the dispersed animals are known to go very long distances, occupy new areas. There might be a connection between the other uh, wolf habitat and the habitat I was talking about. So conservation is a very tricky part when it comes to wolves. Uh, so, uh, most of the Deccan Plateau and Rajasthan uh, and even in uh, Himalayas. What are the different ways of communication among wolves? They are yeah, correct. They bark actually, bark and howl. Howling is one interesting thing, I'll tell you. One day, suddenly at around 7.30 in the evening, right next to our camp, one, uh, uh, somebody saw a subadult uh, wolf. So, that evening, we tried to follow that wolf in the night. Actually, it had come alone. Then after following it, he, it was a full moon lit uh, area, so we were just following. Actually, about 500 meters away, it had made one young uh, five-month-old pup. Uh, it was. Uh, it made it sit there, and it had come to visit our camp to find out if there is anything to steal. So these alpha male had actually assigned the job to these subadults to take around the pups. This was important because you you cannot go in a group and steal things. You have to distribute yourself. Go find your own food. 
So that has to be taught from such an younger days, and those pups can be vulnerable if people chase and. The, ಮತ್ತೆ after many many months also we didn't know how many wolves are there in our pack the pack which we were following because we were all seeing stray animals in the same bit of range then we realized they all belong to the same pack and these they they only join together maybe in the night sometime you start hearing the howling calls then you start hearing the howling calls from different direction i think they are all they all assemble or they all talk and find out where the other fellow is that is one of the way the other one i want to tell you ah very interesting is uh, actually one of the uh shepherd told us that uh, yesterday evening uh, yesterday night or something like that one of the uh, the wolf came to his dressing and uh stolen one uh, you know chicken or you know you know i thought so uh in the next few days whenever we got the chance we tried to track them down one day we actually found just the legs outside uh, buried i mean the wolf had actually buried a whole chicken inside a uh, inside the mud and only those two legs were visible from uh, the top then we all took different position about half a kilometer away on the rocks and through the binoculars we were working we were watching and slowly that fellow brought a pup and they fit together and again took it and ran away into the bushes we assumed that they fit together it was amazingly you know it was becoming more and more surreal for us it had actually gone and hidden uh its food in uh, below the has the pandemic affected the wolf nan heldange first of all we hardly saw wolves so you can imagine one complete survey agide a survey in south india ali or karnataka ali wolf survey adre they have hardly seen wolf but they have the methodology proper systematic approach to find out the numbers but uh, the situation is that so pandemic affect agutho illa wolfke antandre it's a very mm. okay i'll take it in later yeah actually if you go back to the this pandemic and pathogen effects they have actually this microorganisms and uh, these pathogens have actually shaped the evolution they have even speciation who we are why we are what we are today is also maybe because of uh, this type of pandemics all through our evolutionary period they have always had very strong effect on all the species not only in it's okay we'll discuss. i think yeah 
what are the different ways of communication among wolves at the area has the pandemic uh, where, where in karnataka is the wolf found ade now uh, one of the one wolf was uh, seen even near kanakpura or something like that so north of uh, chitradurga hiriur areas usually so all over uh, in uh, human habitat in nada karnataka dry areas do wolves always kill old weak and sick animals but whatever we saw no in actually uh, in uh, proper ecosystem they are able to kill any big animals also in uh, groups and uh, whatever we saw with the domestic animals that that didn't make any uh, the, our data was not showing anything like that. they were also taking uh, uh, completely grown animals but they have to pick up and run so that is why we thought that sometimes they pick up smaller animals especially sabarals one of the bigger one was uh, alpha male was taking uh, adults how many wolves are there in a pack that is very accurate there will be lot of limiting factors to a pack like in wild dogs uh, wild dogs and it becomes too complicated if i start talking about wild dogs and the pack dynamics it will take another 3 hours before i complete how many are there in a pack just to answer how many are there in a pack and i might take 2 or 3 hours to answer okay about the wolves again lot of ecological factors in there lot of limiting factors in there it limits the number of packs again there will be lot of strategies where the, they they live in a loose pack or the wolf is a very amazingly interesting uh, social animal sometimes they adopt other animal sometime uh, in uh, extremely thinly distributed areas they are even seen going around with uh, domestic dogs and there are uh, hybrids and uh, so so pack size whatever we were following was around 5 uh, 6 in the beginning and uh, then uh, four sub four pups survived and then many subadults died and again it came back to around 5 do wolves hunt fast prey nam ee area alli we were not we were not aware of all these things but in different areas they they are adopted to different uh, prey very successfully fast in the sense there will be some other limitation to that animal like the speed uh again uh, the stamina will be uh, compromised so these fellows will make up with the stamina and can take them down what what do wolves do to escape the strong sense of smell of dogs which are with shepherd do they do sometimes ward off the smell emitted that's what i that's why i told you one incident i think uh, that answers all your questions actually they had moved in from uh, Uh, don't mean, I mean, again, it's the wind that comes down. So none of the dogs got the smell on one one occasion. The other occasion, I think the supporter diverted uh, many of them. Okay, done. How many female pups males are there in the pack? Other that composition again changes with respect to the relation, uh, their genetic relation with the adults. I mean, the alpha male and alpha female. That is also there. And uh, uh, they may have a female or a male, one alpha female and one separate female and three separate males and four pups which uh, the sex we are not sure. Lifespan of wolves. i'm not very sure in 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 the wild i think 9 uh, 10 years is great achievement in the domestic case they might live up to around 18 years or so are wolves endangered what is their icn status oh, now i'm in trouble i forgot wolves are okay so least concern least concern da okay number of wolves in the pack uh-huh. 
again number of books and there are various according to uh, the ecological constraints and so many other factors thank you all yes sir so you can speak now sir with uh, your presentations now we could you know we travel through uh, culture and landscape of uh, northern karnataka sir apart from wolves is quite interesting and it, uh, it you know it, it also shows how much effort is required you know make uh, any study or any um, like to give rock of a wolf as such it is a very wonderful uh, journey sir as such it's now only you know one and a half we are in sweet university we are speaking only uh, we, we we have to meet again sir we have to meet again sir. story as such the whole story uh, thank you very much sir despite the difficult situation all around we could be talk to be here and you know present your share your experience with us, uh, with us uh, and also what we were saying so very much sir. Thank you. 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 Thank